What's going on everybody? It's a nice hot Wednesday evening and uh, we are getting ready to load up these two frames and take them to scrap tomorrow and I figured you know what before we do since there's a, a 1500 and a 2500 here that we take a, a little video just to kind of show some of the main differences just because uh, I don't know how many of you have ever gotten down uh, at least to this level on uh, you know something like this so um, well let's see where to start um, I guess body mounts are probably one of the uh, biggest differences as you can see some of them uh, we tried to line them up as best we could with the forklift so we've got some of them that do line up here on the side uh, as well as the core support ones uh, up here the ones that don't line up are more uh, towards the back so uh, the one down here uh, by the upper forelink and the one here uh, that's sort of by uh, one of the rear crossovers uh, as well as I believe one of the ones in the back since we're missing the one here uh, is gone since this frame was horribly repaired uh, but if I remember correctly it should be in the same spot so um, and then these here pull this out of the way if you look at the 1500 it's uh, further down here or it's further outwards and then this one is actually further inwards and that's basically just for the upper shock mount for the axle versus the coil spring style mount for the 1500 so uh, body mounts quite a bit different the frame features itself with where the rear tank is so there's a eight or nine gallon tank that goes right here on the 2500s obviously on the 1500s it's just the spare tire so that is all different so all the cross members and everything are different <clears throat> the frame width in the back is actually the same so if you have a uh, a hitch or something that you want to try to make work on one versus the other the frame width is the same in the back but as we move forward basically right at the rearmost cross member on the 1500 chassis the frame now will start to come out so the frame is actually wider on a 1500 than it is on a 2500 and if we stand back here you can kind of get an idea the 2500 is pretty much a straight frame rail all the way front to back kind of like what you find on a chassis uh, like a truck chassis or a uh, you know a heavy duty application where the 1500 frame uh, kind of goes in and out so um, we were originally going to take the front of this 2500 frame cut it somewhere and try to graft it onto the back uh, or vice versa I guess we were trying to eliminate the uh, front end and back end of one because this one has a, a bend here on the uh, the 1500 chassis it's got a, a fold right here because it got hit in the front and then this one's got a bunch of damage uh, on the back so it's actually bowed out right here since it got hit pretty hard in the back uh, this whole frame rail is actually twisted over it's kind of hard to see but the whole thing is rolled and all this uh, obvious repair work that's done very horribly but this was the damning picture <laughs> uh, of why this frame was no longer going to be used so um, and there's a bunch of stuff when we'll go inside and show you guys kind of what they did on the body of this thing and uh, it's seen uh, better days so both of these frames are basically non repairable non fixable but we were going to try to take sorry I might have misspoke we were going to try and take the front of the 2500 frame because it's got 2500 arms and a slightly taller frame section and try to graft it onto the back side of the 1500 frame so we could keep the four link and everything out back but have a 2500 front end and uh, there's just nothing really that overlaps as far as the locations other than maybe somewhere right about here but even then the frame height is about two inches different so it really wouldn't uh, be an economical way to graft these two together so <clears throat> um, the other thing is the 1500 frame is completely boxed so front to rear it is one boxed member so all the way back to the trailer hitch holes and all the way through the front it's completely boxed and the 2500 frame as you can see 
is an open C channel, which kind of makes me wonder, is the 2500 frame actually stronger? Uh, to me, you know, the 2500 frames being an open C channel will flex a lot more before I guess they would fail or crack or bend, but a fully boxed enclosed style frame is generally going to be stronger uh, in the long run. So, um, you know, we've had, for example, you know, this guy, 1500 uh, chassis, makes about 700 horsepower and don't have any issues with it uh, flexing or moving or anything like that. Uh, none of the glass is, you know, cracked or popped out. So these 1500 chassis are actually pretty strong. Um, the other big thing difference wise on these is the uh, control arms. So the lower arms actually share the same mounting pattern front to back. So you can take technically a 1500 arm or a 2500 arm and switch them out. The mounting centers, so the distance between the left and right or the driver and passenger on the 2500 chassis is one inch narrower overall from left to right. So, and we'll show you a picture of that here in a minute with the arms. So they aren't necessarily interchangeable. Uh, they will bolt in, but it will mess with your suspension geometry. And obviously the upper arms uh, are way, way different. So uh, there's about, I believe, a 10 inch spread between these or a 12 inch spread. And these are basically two inches wider on each side. So the upper arms are completely non-interchangeable. Uh, so you're kind of stuck with uh, 1500 arms or 2500 arms with whatever chassis you're uh, working with, but you could theoretically change out the lower arms if you had a way to modify the camber or uh, use a different upper arm or something of that uh, effect. So the other thing here between the 1500s and 2500s is the core support and bumper mounts. So if you look at where this body mount is for a 2500 uh, in relation to where the bumper top pad sits uh, this is a lot lower than what you would find on a 1500. It's almost, it's about two inches here and it's about four inches here. So the core support physically sits lower and we'll get to that when we go over to the uh, core supports. Um, but if you're switching bumpers out or switching, trying to put a 2500 uh, bumper on a 1500, you may have to modify the, uh, the horns for the actual uh, bumper itself. So uh, also the hook mounts are different. So the hooks will not uh, interchange between the two and uh, other than that I think that's pretty much everything on these uh, the gearboxes will interchange uh, the motor mounts are different as well so the motor mount brackets as you can see the 1500s are quite a bit longer uh, where the tubes are where the shells go over 2500s are quite a bit narrower um, but uh, nothing else really transfers over all the cross members are different, the gas tanks are completely different, and uh, they use the same body mounts, the actual rubber pieces, so those are interchangeable, but really nothing else uh, between these two will interchange, and obviously one has coil buckets for rear coil springs, and one's got leaf spring hangers and shackles for a leaf spring axle. So uh, as far as the body mounts go, GM was smart enough where they actually stamp all the bodies for both chassis. So there isn't a 2500 body and a 1500 body. They're both the same. Uh, and we'll climb under this 1500 Z71 and show you. So if we look under here, you can see this is the rear body mount on the left side and the rear body mount on the right side. And they're in the same spot on both, uh, both of the frames. Let me climb under here. But if we look, on uh, some of these mounts. So on the passenger side, we've got a single uh, stamped mount uh, back by the rear AC. But on the driver side, we actually have two locations. So basically all you would have to do is take a uh, nut and get it on the back side of this and you could run, or sorry, it's actually this hole. Uh, you can run a, uh, either drill a hole in the floor and uh, put a nut with a big washer or something back here and uh, you could actually put a body mount here. Same thing with uh, these up here. So on the 1500s, this mount is up here, uh, but on the 2500s, the mount would go here. Same thing on the passenger side. So on the 1500s, the mount is there. On the 2500s, it would go here. So you could theoretically take a 1500, 
climb out of here. Yeah. You could take a a 1500 body or a 2500 body and switch it around vice versa and you wouldn't have any issues there so um, and like I said with the control arms the lower arms are interchangeable so I've got a 2500 arm up top and a 1500 arm down below and you can see we kind of lined the bushings up as best we could the, the pattern is the same here the torsion key receiver is in the same location um, they are keyed uh, slightly different on the angle, so you'd be uh, you'd have to pay attention to that. Uh, the torsion bars themselves are actually longer by about an inch on the 2500s, so they're not interchangeable there unless you move the torsion cross member. But if we look from the top, the 2500 arm cuts in a little bit harder than the 1500 arm, and I'm not sure if that's for additional tire clearance or uh, I guess it would be brake clearance at that point because the 2500 brakes are quite a bit bigger. Um, they also have, the 1500s have a pad for the bump stop, or the jounce bumper, or whatever you want to call it. The 2500s just have a stop lug. The mounting for the shocks is a little bit different. These will take a standard eyelet style shock. These have to have a, a double clevis, clevis style shock. And if we look from the side, you can see the 2500 arm. If we line up where the bolt holes are and then come out, the 2500 arm is actually about an inch longer overall and that's what makes up for the difference uh, that we're lacking in the frames where you're missing an inch uh, in the frame but overall you have the same track width so uh, let's go over to the core supports that I have on one of the other vehicles and uh, that's one of the other things that you can't uh, change from one to the other so this is also uh, the gas tanks from the 2500 to so the rear tank and the front tank, uh, the front tanks are pretty similar to a 1500. The only real difference that I've seen is the front of the tank on the 1500s has a slant cut to clear one of the cross members. And we'll show you that here when we get over to the other chassis uh, next to the building. So we've got a, <clears throat> a 1500 core support here and a 2500 core support here. Let me stand these up here. There we go. Sorry, headphone users. Let's see if I can get this thing to stand up and stay here. Stuff wants to kind of always just fall over. There we go. All right, so looking at these, if you were to come up to these in a junkyard and <clears throat> try to figure out which one is for which, they look almost identical, right? They've got the same style construction most of the rib nuts are in the same places they're missing a couple depending on which model it is depending on the 2500 has more across the top of the shroud compared to the 1500 the stampings in the bottom uh, for the radiator shock mounts are almost the same but if you look at the sides this is where the fender bolts on on the 1500s and this is where the fender bolts on on the 2500s and overall the 2500 core support is actually about two and a half inches taller from the top to the bottom than the 1500 so from here to here so that you can't interchange them um, you could technically but you'd have to cut out the front of the frame drop it down like two and a half inches uh, for where the body mount is and realign everything and uh, yeah it's a lot of work for changing out a core support so um, like I said, the, the really the only other difference between these two is some of the rib nut locations. But uh, if you wanted to put an 8.1 core support in a 1500, you'd have to do a lot of modifications to the front of the actual frame. So, might not be everyone's cup of tea or you know under their their wheelhouse of abilities, I guess. So, uh, this is a 1500 EXT Escalade uh, chassis underneath a. Ford chassis and uh, this is what we're going to put that green body on and uh, put that 14 bolt and the nine and a quarter in the front here but uh, as you can see the, the gas tank from that 2500 is almost identical but you have this cross member here that comes down let's see if we can see it here comes down kind of at a slant so uh, the 2500 tank goes straight down so you'd basically have to eliminate this entire cross member 
So not something that most people want to do just to gain a couple gallons of fuel. But, you know, you can do what you want. Um, other than that, the, uh, sorry, the Escalade EXT uh, and the Suburban and the Yukon XL frames are all the same in the 1500s and the 2500s. So everything is interchangeable that way. But uh, that was just pretty much all the differences that we've seen uh, in all this. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. But uh, I think that pretty much covers everything.